Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Fishing with James. Today's video is going to be the start of a new series I'll be making here on my channel where I'll show you how to tie a variety of crappie jigs while also throwing the finished product in my fish tank to give you guys some underwater footage of the jig. So if you think you'd be interested in future videos like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss any new videos in this series. And with that being said, let's take a look at what we'll be using to make this jig. And as always, everything I use will be linked in the description in case you want to tie this jig yourself. So firstly, we'll have our 1 8 ounce jig head and we'll be coating it with some ProTech pink powder paint. Uh, the reason I'm doing the pink for the jig head is because the water I'm fishing has been stained recently and this will really help our jig stand out some. Next, I've got this white chenille with some flash built into it. I just got this from Shields, but I'm sure there are many similar alternatives out there. For the tail, I've got some white marabou feathers. For the flash, I'll just be using this white and silver tinsel. Finally, we've got our thread on the bobbin and some super glue to help fasten it onto the jig. And of course, we also have our vise and other tools we'll need to tie up the jig, and all of these will be in the description as well. So now that we have all of our materials laid out, Let's go ahead and start tying this jig, shall we? So the first thing we're gonna do is take our forceps and get a nice grip on the eye of the jig. We're gonna go and clamp that down. Next, we're gonna go ahead and get our Protec pin out and open it up. I wanna make sure all the clumps are out of it. There shouldn't be any, but I'm just gonna kind of knock it down on the table to get that set up. And we're going to take our propane torch and light each side of the jig for about three to four seconds uh, in the direct heat. You don't want to go anymore or you will melt the lead on the table. I have learned this the hard way. Once you've heated up your jig, you're simply going to take it and douse it down in there in the paint and knock off all the excess powder. This makes sure that no paint clumps onto the jig and that you should have a nice even coverage of paint on your jig head. So now that I've got that knocked out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and clamp my jig onto the vise. You want to get it about as straight as you can. What I've got will be fine. Next up, we're going to go ahead and break out the good old super glue and lay a really thin line right from the beginning of the jig head down almost to the base of the hook right there, the point. Once we've got that glue laid down, we're going to take our thread right here and begin to wrap it again from the head of the jig all the way down to the point of the hook. That's kind of my mark point right about there and uh, then we're gonna go all the way back up to the head of the jig. So once I've got my thread set off to the side I'm gonna go ahead and take my scissors and snip that tag end as close to the jig as I can and then from here it's time to pick our feather. So I have a whole marabou feather right here and what I'm gonna do is look through and start to pull apart strands to see if I can find a section of feather that would work well for the jig. And right here is a solid little section, so I've got it picked out, and I'm gonna lay it right down onto the hook of the jig to measure length. So this is a little bit too long, so I'm gonna go ahead and move up just a little bit, and uh, so that looks about more what I'm looking for right there. So now we're just gonna take our scissors and cut off the section of feather that we want to use for the jig and discard the other feather off to the side that might can be used for later. Next, I'm going to tightly hold my feather down to the jig head here. I've got it measured out where I want it, and uh, I'm going to hold it down really tight to that jig head. This is gonna be a little bit tricky to do at first. I'm gonna wrap that thread around it and make sure that my feather doesn't get twisted or pulled off the side. I'm gonna hold it tight right there. It looks good right there. So I'm gonna wrap the thread down about two thirds of the way to the hook point, not all the way to the hook point like before. And then we're gonna go ahead and wrap it back around the head a few more times and set the thread off to the side. That looks real good. So now we're gonna pick out one strand of tinsel and cut it at the top. So now we've got that, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and fold it in half. You're gonna to wanna to make sure it's as even as you can get it. And uh, now we're gonna take our scissors right here and cut the loop. And now we have two separate strands and we're gonna do the exact same thing again. We're gonna fold those two strands in half. But once we have them folded in half, we're simply going to take them and line them up at the head of the jig Make sure they're even and hold them up just like this. Now this part can be a little bit tricky, but what we're gonna do is take the thread and wrap that tinsel down the jig all the way down to the same spot that we wrapped with the feather and go all the way back up to the jig head. So now I'm gonna start off my thread to the side and I'm going to take my scissors and cut off the extra bits of tinsel behind the feathers, being careful not to clip the feathers. Now this is the part where the jig really starts to come together. I'm gonna to take my white chenille here and we are going to begin making the body of the jig. So I'm just gonna take my piece of chenille and lay it down flush with the head there and start wrapping really slowly. And I'm gonna go down again 
to the same spot that I ended with the tinsel and where I ended with the feather. It's very important not to go over this. You wanna make sure that you end in that same spot. I'm gonna hold everything back so I don't hit any feathers right there where I just pointed and we're gonna go all the way back. And now that we've got the chenille on there, we're just gonna take our rotary function on the vise and slowly begin to wrap up the jig. Now, as you can see, it's very important to go ahead and make sure you're as precise as you can be because this is the body of the jig. You don't want it to be uneven in any areas. This chenille is a little bit thin, so I do a few layers on it just to get the desired thickness that I want. And again, taking my time to go all the way back up to the jig until we've gotten to this point here. Finally, we're going to take our thread and we are going to hold the chenille down as tight as we can and go up underneath the chenille right there to kind of pinch it to the jig. Now we're gonna go around the head of the jig once and we're gonna go back underneath the chenille again and we're gonna to continue to repeat this process. So back around the jig head, under the chenille, and then back around the jig head a few more times uh, just to go ahead and make sure we've got it tight. And now once we've gotten to this part of the process, we're gonna take our scissors here and very, very carefully, we are going to go ahead and cut the chenille as close to the base of the jig as we can without snipping the thread or damaging the chenille on the jig. So there we go, got a nice little cut right there. Now all that is left to do is to whip this jig and finish it. And this is very hard, but I'm gonna try and guide you guys through it. So you're gonna take your whipping tool and like this, and you're gonna put your thread through that hook right there around the bottom and you're gonna go up like this and fold it over to create a triangle. So you should end with a triangle. I'm gonna go back and do this again. So you've got your hook right here. You're gonna grab the thread, go around the bottom, up, and rotate over to make that triangle. Once you've gotten that triangle, you're gonna go around the head of the jig just like we did before three times. All this is doing is twisting around the jig head to tighten off the thread and make sure nothing comes loose. Now all we have to do is get that thread hooked and pull from the bobbin end and pull it tight to the jig, slip that hook out, and now we're just gonna take our scissors, pull that thread tight, and cut it as close to the jig as we can, just like that. And now we have a finished bubblegum ice crappie jig. Now remember to stick around because I'm gonna have some underwater footage of this jig in just a moment, but first I just wanted to show you guys the jig up close. I had a little bit of trouble getting the camera to focus, but hopefully you can see how this jig turned out. And if you think this jig looks great out of the water, wait until you see it underwater. Look at this thing move in the water. Every little movement, those feathers get to moving around, creating a ton of action in the water. Even just sitting still, this thing moves around a ton. You can see bouncing it off the bottom does the same thing, creates the same effect, ton of action. And uh, you won't get this with any soft plastic jigs. Now this is not a substitute all for uh, soft plastic jigs, but it's a great way to change up your pattern when they aren't eating soft plastics. So if you've stuck around until now, I hope you all enjoyed this video and maybe learned something new. Comment down in the comment section below what colors you want to see me tie, and you never know, you might see one of your suggestions in a future video. So again, please consider subscribing to my channel if you're not already, and consider liking, commenting, and sharing this video if you enjoyed it. So with all that said, I will see you all on the next episode of Fishing with James.